welcome to It's Happening in Grand Prairie. I'm Georgia Clemson, and we have a beautiful guest. We have Whitney Walters with Parks, Arts, and Recreation Department in Grand Prairie. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, Miss Georgia. Oh, it's so good to see you, Whitney. And we know when the parks come, uh, <laughs> we know it, we get to talk about fun things. Yes. And we're in full swing for spring. We are. Right? We are. Tell us where we're going to start. Yes, ma'am. So we are starting off with April with Farmer's Market opening back up. So Saturday, April 2nd is the first day of market and it'll kick off the season from now through December. So every Saturday, 8 to 1 o'clock down at the Farmer's Market, it'll be a full blown going. Farmer's Market. Mm -hmm. And everybody loves Farmer's Market that knows about it. Yes, they come down there, neighbors get to visit, mm -hmm. they get to buy goodies. Mm -hmm. And they'll get to see the new photo ops there. Yes, as well. we have a few really cute photo ops that we have added, and we'll have a few new vendors this year. Um, we'll have live music a lot of the days, so we're excited to be bringing it back this year. That is exciting. Now, when you do have special events at a farmer's market, how will they know about that? So all of our events will be on grandfun.com. Um, under the special events tab, people can go there and check out what we've got going on. So I can hardly wait for Farmer's Market. Mm -hmm. And then what's next? Next, we have our Easter extravaganza, our annual uh, big Easter egg hunt that we do. So that'll be Saturday, April 16th this year, starting at 10 a.m. till about noon. So all kids, families are welcome. Ages 10 and under will get to enjoy a free Easter egg hunt that we'll have at Mike Lewis Park. So new location this year, but we're really excited about it. It'll be on the ball fields this year. That is wonderful. Extravaganza. They get to hunt <laughs> eggs. They, what else could they do there? We'll have the Easter there. Bunny there, oh, photo good. ops, bounce houses, rock wall climbing, face painting. Um, a lot of our city vendors will be coming out. We'll have food trucks. So just about anything you can think of, we'll have there for families and kids to enjoy. So it's a free event, but if mm -hmm. they want to purchase mm -hmm. food, that's, that's their Yes, uh, ma'am. Privilege there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, that sounds good. Extravaganza. Yes, and then do we have something else? Whitney? We have a really big event that we are finally bringing back after a couple of years away. Um, so Main Street Fest is finally back downtown. So April fi Friday, April 22nd through Sunday, April 24th is Main Street Fest. So um, down here at City Hall, we'll have Main Stage going. We'll have a smaller stage going as well throughout the event. Carnival rides. So it is finally back. Yes, and not everybody knows about Main Street uh, event. Can mm -hmm. tell us some more about it? Yes, so Main Street Fest, it's our ninth annual year to have this. Um, so we are back. We'll have carnival rides, up to 14 rides that people can purchase um, tickets for. There's all you can ride passes. If you want to do that, you're going to stay all day. We'll also have the Farmer's Market activated with the Kid Zone. Um, and Market will be hosted on Saturday as well, the weekend of the event. So we have that. Um, lots of food vendors, uh, lots of arts and crafts vendors, businesses, uh, food and beverages. We'll have it all. That sounds exciting. And who are some of our main uh, headliners? Yes, ma'am. Uh, this year we've got a little bit of everything. So Friday night we have a fun, funky band called Uptown Drive that'll be on our main stage. And then Saturday we have the country music star Craig Morgan that'll be in town performing. And then Sunday we have a really popular, awesome act, uh, Michael Salgado will be here on Sunday night for us. Wow, that sounds really, really fabulous. And how about um, some of our local talent? Yes, ma'am. Um, so our very own Monica Saldivar will be back on Sunday and she'll be opening up the stage for Michael Salgado. So we're really excited to have her come back and still be a part of the festival for us. Yes, she's always so excellent and mm -hmm. she's a Grand Prairie uh, girl as well mm -hmm. and she's won lots of awards lately, hasn't she? She has, more and more, I think, every time we see her. So uh, she has become very successful, very well known, so we're, we're really glad she still comes home to perform for us. Yes, and we appreciate her whole family that supports yes, her as well. Absolutely. Yes, and do you have any other local talent? We do. So um, our stage at the Farmer's Market will actually be the Grand Prairie Arts Council stage. So they've got a lot of local talent, school, um, arts studios. They'll be here performing on that stage throughout the weekend as well over at the Farmer's Market. Well, I know you mentioned uh, you might have food vendors there mm -hmm. as well. So mm -hmm. if I'm really hungry when I go up there, mm -hmm. give me some options. So we've got lots of options. We've got some of the fan favorites that we've had years before. and We've got a lot of new vendors. So Kona Ice will, of course, be there. Um, and then we've got Mexican food. We've got Asian food, barbecue. We even have a, a fried fish vendor this year. So we're really excited to have that. So a little bit of everything for everybody. 
Yes, lots of choices. Mm -hmm. And we do have a few places on Main Street they could visit as well, don't Absolutely. we? Of our restaurants that Absolutely. are there all the time. Yes, ma'am. Well, this sounds exciting. Mm -hmm. I know that spring is going to be very, very exciting. And yes. at the very end of April, what's happening? So we have our Cinco de Mayo uh, parade and celebration is back in full force this year as well. So the weekend following Main Street, Saturday, April 30th, will be the Cinco de Mayo parade. So that'll start at Graf Chevrolet at 10 a.m. Saturday, April 30th, and then that will travel down Main Street, end at City Hall, and they'll have live music, food, vendors, um, all sorts of fun things going on until 6 o'clock that night. Yes, that's always a huge event, and we really appreciate Gloria Carrillo and her committee that put that together along with the city and the schools as well. So it's a wonderful joint effort, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Team effort for sure. <laughs> yes. And uh, it sounds like everybody's going to be busy. Yes, ma'am. We have opportunities. Sum up our opportunities for the springtime in Grand Prairie. Mm -hmm. Lots of them, almost every weekend. So Yes, we start with... Yes. We start with Farmer's Market. We do. So the, the first opening. weekend, yes ma'am, Farmer's Market will be open the first weekend. Um, April 16th will be the Easter Extravaganza. Uh, Friday, April 22nd through Sunday, April 24th will be Main Street Fest. And then Saturday, April 30th will be the Cinco de Mayo Parade. Whitney, we're <laughs> all going to be so busy. Yes ma'am, we are. <laughs> but it's going to be so much fun. Absolutely, absolutely. And if they want more information on any of the events, tell mm -hmm. us where they go again. Uh, they can go to the parks website, so grandfungp.com. You go to the special events tab and everything is listed there. Whitney, this is exciting. Thank you so yes, much for sharing this information with us today. Thank you, Miss Georgia. We'll see you there. <laughs> yes, indeed. And we'll be right back. The City of Grand Prairie offers Alert GP, a high-speed communication service for emergency notifications. Receive alerts from the Grand Prairie Emergency Management Team by going to the City's website and following the sign-up instructions. Alert GP can notify a lot of people in a short time. It targets the entire city or specific areas where critical community alerts are necessary. If we can't reach you, we can't alert you. Visit gptx.org slash alertgp and sign up today. Welcome back, and we're so excited to welcome our next guest, Mr. Rodney DeBond. Welcome to It's Happening. Hi, Georgia. Rodney, we know you have a miraculous story, and the reason you are here today is to promote um, that giving life to others, which you have received. Tell us about it. Well, uh, April is a Organ Donor Awareness Month, and just want to remind people that you know uh, the benefits and the and the uh, actual joys of what organ donation actually means is that I try to tell people all the time that don't be thinking about uh, donating. Be thinking about if somebody you love actually needs an organ transplant, because if people don't donate then the person you love who needs one won't, won't receive. And it's all about giving life after death. Yes, and what a blessing that is to so many people and the fact that you promote it because you have a personal story as well, don't you? Yeah, uh, October, this coming up October, will be the beginning of my uh, 28th year from a heart transplant. And that's kind of a milestone because everything that I've been able to discover and what the doctors have told me, there's probably less than four or five people in the world who have been out 28 years from a heart transplant. So, so you get to enjoy that miracle every day. That's don't right. You? That's right. Yes. And, uh, you know, the gift that God gives us every day is He, as you well know, He lets you wake up today. Yes. And so we have the day to go out and solve the world's problems because we're alive. And um, uh, I was, you know, 36 years old and caught a virus. You know, viruses are big in the news today because of, yes. of the COVID. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I had a virus affect me t almost 28 years ago and um, before COVID was on everybody's minds. And so things can happen to you that don't have anything to do with, uh, that you have control of. Uh, you know, your lifestyle or whatever you do, sometimes things just happen. And uh, that's what happened to me, at, you know, when I was at the age of 36. 
and through uh, the generosity of the Nicholas family, when their young son, David Nicholas, at the age of 22, passed away, they made a request to give David's heart to me, which was the first time in history there ever been a directed heart donation. And um, that's why I'm alive today. Yes, and just the connection of having that heart beating in your chest and you knowing the people who donated it and uh, having a relationship with them, that's made it more of a driving passion for you, hasn't it? Well, yeah, certainly. Uh, the Nicholas family and my family, we're just one big giant family now. And we were total strangers before this happened. And in what you said, it, it gives everybody a more sense of responsibility because you are now alive at, at the detriment of somebody who's not. Yes. And so your every day that you have today, if you've received an organ transplant, is a is is a gift that that other person doesn't have. It is indeed, and you've made this your passion, and you've given your life, donated your life back to promoting this, so you can be a blessing to others as well. And I know you have some events coming up that help support this. Um, a special one is in April, um, the Wayne Hanks YMCA. Yeah, yes, yeah. We, breakfast. Yeah, the breakfast. Uh, I mean, what we, what the Nicholas Foundation that we founded, we not only try to do things through our own efforts, but we try to be involved with, with other charities. Yes. Because it's all about, it's all about awareness. Well, I know you'll be the main speaker there, and that will be, even though that seven o'clock is early. It's gonna be tough, but you We know. do what we need to do, don't we? <laughs> we, do do. we do, and then there's something coming up that's a 24 hour challenge. Tell me about that. Well, I've got a good friend that came up with this idea a couple of years ago, and he's kind of a crazy person, and uh, he's always doing these challenges, and uh, this is the third year to do it, and uh, the first year was just him and one other guy, and they raised money for our foundation, and they walked for 24 hours. Wow. That doesn't seem a lot, but it really is a lot. It is. They walk for, tw they, they ended up walking like 60, 65 miles, something like that. Well, then the next, then last year, he had about 30 or 40 people show up and do it. And I think this year he plans on having close to 100. And um, so it's just something they dreamed up on their own to help create awareness for our cause. Yes, and that's gonna be in Coppell this year. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then we hope to bring it to Grand Prairie, yeah. maybe in the future, right? I, get, I gotta get the Parks Department to uh, square <laughs> up and we'll do that in, uh, we get, next year. Get it all organized yeah. and bring it to Grand Prairie. That That's sounds right. great. Now, um, you're going to have another event, uh, I believe that the Commission on Aging yes. is coming up soon. Yes. And you're gonna sponsor event, an event for them as well in April. That's right, for all those old people out there. Yes, I love that <laughs> because you've given them the retreat, a great place for them to, That's right. to live and retire. That's right. I, I make light of that because I turned 65 in a couple of weeks, so I can now you know, make fun of myself. You know? That's right, 65. <laughs> well, what a milestone for you and your family to get to celebrate. Yeah, because I was given six months to live when I was 36. Yes, yes, yeah. that is so exciting. Yeah. Uh, now, Rodney, I know it takes a team to run your foundation. Yes. And uh, you've got a great team that work with you. And I know Miss Prudence goes out and represents your organization very well in the city. Uh, any Anybody else you want to well, spotlight? Well, uh, you know, Becky Nicholas, who is my heart donor's sister, you know, she works, she's been working with us for 25 years. Of course, there's, you know, two or three other people in the office that I generally just go where I'm sent, you know. And, yes. uh, uh, but, you know, we, we nowadays, everybody who, works in our real estate development company and everybody who works in the Nicholas Foundation, we have about 65 employees. Every one of our employees know that our cause is first and foremost. And so you, everybody's always promoting it. Everybody's always, you know, looking for ways to do things. And uh, typically, you know, I made a promise a long time ago that I just go wherever God sent me, do whatever, you know, whatever came up. So. Like I said, I usually just go where I'm sent, 
<laughs> that is, that's a good philosophy there. And I think we'd be amiss if we didn't mention Miss Isabel Miss and Gail. Miss Isabel, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Since they office, office uh, right, you office between them or somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So my wife, Isabel, we've been, we'll be married 43 years here in June. And, uh, you know, quite honestly, uh, everybody looks at all of our ventures like, like it's me. It, it's not. I mean, she's the one that runs everything. She and you also are blessed to have your two sons working with you. My two sons, you. Heath and Chase, and our, yeah, uh, you know, I don't know how we get old enough to have kids in their 40s now, but that's the way it is, you know. I know, but we get to enjoy the grandkids now, then. the grandkids are the best, that's right, you know. Well, Rodney, uh, your story is amazing, and uh, we're thankful for, to the good Lord for providing for you and how that you go out and um, bless others. Uh, we, can, we could spend the whole show talking about that, but we're not. And what a blessing you are to the city of Grand Prairie. Your generosity to so many organizations and to our city. And um, just personally, we love you, Rodney DeBond. Well, I appreciate it. And I do want to mention too that there are many people who are in the city, city council members, and many people even in the staff but, you know, since we, you and I grew up in Grand Prairie. That's right. So uh, people who we haven't mentioned today are people all over who are always helping us and always promoting our foundation. And, you know, we have a special relationship with your family. Uh, you know, your mom and dad knew me since I was four years old. That's right. You know. Our and parents that's right. knew each other. Yeah, you, know, and I, you know, I learned a lot from your parents. And... Uh, uh, you know, you and Dan are super, super close to us. And, you know, I just, I'm thankful every day for the people that come into our lives that help us do what we need to do. Yes, indeed. You are so right. And thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. We love you. God bless you. And uh, happy birthday coming up pretty soon. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be right back. Grand Prairie, it's time to bag the bag and grab the bin. The city is no longer collecting recycled items in plastic bags because plastic bags damage processing equipment. Instead, use your recycling bin to hold items for pickup. And remember, only glass bottles and jars, metal cans, and paper products are okay. For more information, please visit gptx.org slash recycle. Welcome back. And we welcome two wonderful guests now. Welcome, ladies. We have Aniska Douglas with a CTE program in Grand Prairie Independent School District. And we have her sidekick here who has been here many times, Ms. Lynn McGinley. Thank you for having us, Thank Ms. Georgia. Us. And what a wonderful team you all make in making a difference to the students of Grand Prairie Independent School District. Aniska. I'm so glad you are here to tell our viewers that may not even know anything about CTE. First of all, tell us what your title is with the school district and what CTE is. I am the Executive Director of Career and Technical Education, which is C CTE in Grand Prairie ISD. Yes, and what does CTE actually do for our students? Oh my goodness, a plethora of things. CTE is so exciting. So it's the sister of academia. So CTE is all about workforce ready and getting pre kids prepared to go out and get those jobs that are, that are vacant right now. Yes, and that is uh, so important now, and that's a focus that is on education, a little change in our past education process, isn't it? That is very true. Um, back in the past, we called CTE schools Botech schools, where uh, you know perhaps a student wanted to go directly into the workforce and not necessarily go to post-secondary or to college. But now CTE is so much more. We have students earning certificates, cosmetology for certificates, so they can work while they're going to school in the meantime. So it's you know whatever a student chooses or whatever a student uh, desires to do in the future, CTE really is that doorway for them. And uh, Really, the bottom line is not everybody is going to want to go to college or is uh, that's the path for them. So this gives them a wonderful option to be prepared to earn a living, a good living as well. Yes, ma'am. High demand jobs, high wage jobs. That's what we're all about. 
Yes, and that's so exciting. And Lynn, I know you have something to share with us as well. <laughs> yes, I, I want to make it clear too that a lot of our students, a, a big portion of our students, do go on to higher education uh, to finish their degrees. For example, we have a nursing program. So our students who are in nursing, they may come out of high school with their AA degrees so that they only have two years left to go into their nursing degree and within two years they can be registered nurses. So it's a really important program and one of the big advantages is that the students are not paying for those two years of college. They're doing it while they're in high school. Yeah. The students are not paying for that cosmetology certification. They can go right to work as a licensed uh, cosmetologist but they didn't have to pay that $22,000, $25,000 because they got those classes and certifications in high school. And those are just two examples, Ms. Just Georgia. Just two examples. We have 35 plus pathways where students are doing the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. Do yes. you know that we have a student who has his uh, flying license? Single pilot license. Single pilot license. Single he got that license. through aviation, our aviation pathway. He's one. It's a rare thing that he did that and he did it I think with his own um, goal setting and his own uh, yes. uh, initiative, but what a wonderful thing for a kid to have that on yes. his uh, resume. Such wonderful options that we have for our students now in GPISD. And Aniska, where do they start making this pathway plan? What at usually what grade? That's a great question. So we start off in middle school. We wanna make sure that we understand the interest of the student. Studies tell us that students know their profession around the third grade. So, you know, I, I want to be a nurse. I, I want to help Johnny. I want to put the Band-Aid on the boo-boo. You know, normally in third grade or in elementary school, they start to figure out what they are interested in and what they like. Mm -hmm. So in middle school, we offer exploratory classes for CTE. We expose them to all 35 of our pathways, see what sticks, and then in ninth grade, they start taking their introductory classes and then matriculate through their, throughout their senior year. So. I love that, that you started at, in middle school. I wish I had have had that um, opportunity as well mm -hmm. to sort of explore the different pathways. And I know my son works in that area uh, with the middle school and I'm so proud of him for being a part of that as well. Um, Aniska, you have something coming up that is a, gonna be a real benefit to these students. What is that? Yes, we're so excited about it. It is our first annual GPISD Senior Job Fair, sponsored by CTE. We have over 2,000 graduates this year, and we have tons of employers throughout the community that we've worked with um, in internships or speaking events, uh, and we know that they are in need of employees. So we are going to have a job fair for those seniors. We've invited all these different companies and local businesses in to hire our students. The students are gonna come ready and prepared with resumes. We are so excited that we are marrying the two for the first time, and we're hoping that, that a lot of students a lot of quality students get right. employment out of this career fair. Yes, and what's the date and time? It is April 28th from 9 to 2.30 at Asia Times Square. Yes, and what a great opportunity for the students and the uh, businesses as well. And Lynn, I know you have several businesses that have really been helpful to you. We do. We have a lot of large corporations that are going to be coming to our fair. at and um, uh, UPS, FedEx, this, uh, Dallas County, the city of Grand Prairie. Great opportunity for students. If they're not going on to college, a lot of these companies will take our high school graduates and they can have careers all the way f for the rest of their lives. I work for at and I went in as a service rep, which is the job that they're gonna be looking for at this job fair, and I came out as an executive of the company. So. There's a career there for our kids if they do the right things and if they and if they uh, work diligently and if they're they're ready to go to work and show their best selves. So I'm really excited about this job fair and what it can do for our students. Yes, and Aniska, I'm so proud of you for having this brainchild <laughs> of um, the job fair. That's something that can make a difference for so many people. And uh, the job you do for GPISD and the students, we know you have a passion for their success. And um, 
We appreciate you so much and Lynn as well for all the many years that you have invested in this program. And as I said, you make a dynamic duo <laughs> and are making a difference. Is there anything else you want to tell our viewers before we sign off for today? Thank you, Miss Georgia. I would just like to say that it takes a village. I'd like to thank uh, the parents, the students, the teachers, the administrators, the community, uh, the city, the chamber, everyone that helps us throughout the year to become what we are. I couldn't be more proud of our program and our students, but we know it's because of folks like you that pour into us daily uh, that we are um, as good as we are. So thank you to everyone out there. Yes, an attitude of gratitude, and yes, I appreciate <laughs> that so much. And thank you both for being here and for sharing this wonderful information with us and with our viewers. Thank you for having us. Thank you. And thank you for joining us today. I'm Georgia Clemson reminding you, as always, it's happening in Grand Prairie.